What is your underlying worldview of the widening income disparities? Well, uh, currently the world is in chaos. Uh, there are lots of uh, ripples here and there. Uh, fundamental upheavals are occurring in many parts of uh, the world, governed by uh, contrasting principles with regards to power, uh, which uh, conventionally known as uh, political, uh, economical and military power, and which seems currently converged into one. Uh, greed, uh, social and economic inequality, climate change, and misuse of natural resources, as well as uh, miscommunication which uh, tries to make you responsible for what uh, uh, others perceived, not for what you have said. So this is just uh, to name a few. Uh, there are a few issues we could discuss uh, uh, pertaining to increasing income inequality despite our increasing uh, GDP. Uh, regional uh, conflicts in Oromia and Ethiopia, Somali, regions uh, and implications in the Horn of Africa and how my party is working uh, in tandem with all uh, stakeholders. I will emphasize the need to uh, resort to soft power and dynamic dialogue to achieve peace and security and overcome uh, political disorder uh, in the region. Sadly, Horn of Africa is also plagued by erratic climate issue and this has to be uh, dealt with utmost attention, as well uh, deal with political turmoil and economic development. I will emphasize the need uh, to employ uh, knowledge-based economic development, especially uh, innovation as a means to tackle recurrent climate issue. Ethiopia seems to be uh, doing fairly well, uh, continuing the remarkable decade-long double-digit economic growth. Uh, as of this year, our country is the largest economy in East Africa. In fact, International Monetary Fund IMF uh, estimates the real gross uh, uh, domestic product to be around 9%. Uh, despite this promising trend, circumstantial evidence has shown that income and wealth inequality has increased. Uh, globally, almost half of uh, the world's wealth is now owned by just 1% uh, of the world population. Hence, income disparity is a global crisis and shakes up the well-being of uh, communities worldwide. Bringing this story home, we have also become the second largest population in Africa and estimated to become uh, the 10th most populous uh, place on the planet Earth by uh, 2050. Income disparity is one of our pressing issues. Uh, individuals sprouted with wealth much higher than the annual budget of uh, some of the regional states. There is a massive concentration of uh, economic resources in the hands of a uh, few people uh, presenting in a significant rate. This disparity in access to economic power undermines social peace, hinders a fair and inclusive economic progress, and instigates political uh, turmoil. What's more, uh, sea lanes in the Red Sea and in the Indian Ocean are considered among the most strategic. Uh, almost more than 80% um, of the world's seaborne trade uh, in oil uh, transits through Indian Ocean uh, checkpoints. How would you define the impact of the current inter-regional conflict between Ethiopian Somali and Oromia, if continued for long? To have peace in East Africa, and the Horn. We need to understand it as a very political dynamic region in the world. Almost nowhere else have uh, geopolitical forces and regional uh, ambitions combined to exhibit volatile time and geopolitical uh, contestation. Chaos in the region has a dire effect in the global affairs. Therefore, uh, solving the conflict which encompasses national Regional and global dimensions requires courage, hope, and unshakable uh, conviction. Above and beyond the decisive involvement of our government, the stakeholders should come together to secure peace and security. 
because delayed solution to this regional conflict could take the Horn of Africa back into uh, unforeseen uh, chaos. Horn of Africa is not only vulnerable to resource and ethnic conflicts, but has been vulnerable to disruptions related to changing climate. Our nation's long history of uh, alternating routes and flood cycle and erratic climate change resulted in a decline in soil fertility, a loss of biodiversity, and deforestation. I believe that the Paris Agreement on Climate Change forms the uh, basis for an international cooperation and long-term climate change uh, action plan. Has there been a permanent shift in the way your party sees conflict? I would like to emphasize that the way uh, our party sees conflict is based on our values, embedded in a constitutionalism and dedication to human rights. We believed we would bring solution to the conflict through democratic path by the uh, persistent exercise of goodwill. Generally speaking, every society that has ever existed in human history has to some point faced uh, it's decline. We cannot be arrogant enough to believe that it cannot happen to us. However, we need to ex um, exercise humility and to recognize the limitations of uh, human foresight. That said, we have faith in our society on, and constitution. We have faith in continued transformation. We need to go above and beyond the narrow prescriptive uh, parameters of the current debates outside the um, fortress of our current system. A system predicated on our natural aspects of greed, selfishness, and fear is dangerous. These are old and dead ideas. An appropriate adoption is the principal task of our party. I impulsively believe that the Ethiopian public could be convinced, but our people need a different uh, rhetoric. My instinct is, and I hope I am right, that the revitalization APRD that uh, presents a framework combining fortitude and purpose will gain the support of uh, the people. Are technology and globalization destined to drive up inequality? There is a widespread view of uh, modern science and technology with um, excessive technological optimism. Uh, however, science and technology has both positive and negative impacts. For instance, increased communication gadget does not mean increased communication and understanding. Research agendas often disregard the hardships faced by billions of uh, uh, impoverished people around the globe. I suggest that we should uh, embrace uh, innovation and research and development in our areas of expertise. We should apply our creative, adaptive and uh, capacities to all that we do. I think you're a hardcore believer in the importance of love and compassion for national stability. Can you share your worldview? I believe in uh, evolutionary stability and natural adaptation. I do not believe anyone can even maintain a status quo eternity every single day. We need to devise a system in which change can be um, accommodated with empowerment. Fear and desire are the twin engines of human survival. These urges will imprison us uh, if we let them. We should dwell on uh, thriving and not merely surviving. The effectiveness of um, any power sources depends primarily on uh, context and we know that our current context requires soft power and not the hard power that exerts scars and sticks. Soft power empowers people, regardless of whether or not one agrees that such criticisms are justified. 
it is increasingly clear that more public engagement is needed in order to address these barriers of distrust and not build more robust partnerships. If progress is to occur, any issue must, at a minimum, be openly and respectively uh, debated. If our objectives are legitimate, uh, we are more likely to persuade other people to follow our lead without using uh, threats and bribes. Militaries could be well uh, suited to defeating states, but they are often poor instrument to fight conflicting ideas floating around uh, intangibly. Today, in many instances, we bear witness uh, to power becoming less tangible and the use of forces less uh, effective. To sum up, it is easier to attract people to democracy rather than to coerce them to be democratic. Time may only be a human concept and therefore ultimately unreal. But what is irrefutably real is that this is the time for us to wake up. We need to be resilient. We need to collect our thoughts, to marshal our hopes, and to plant in our hearts a firm belief in our ideas. To genuinely make a difference, we must become different. Make the tiny, longitudinal shift. Meditate, direct our love indiscriminately and our condemnation exclusively at those with responsibility. In this context, nothing but only peaceful and participatory approaches are the way forward. Thank you very much.